Hello everybody. As you see, we have moved the office outside today. There's no reason not to enjoy the uh, Danish summer while we are working hard on our Global Monetary Conditions Monitor, which we'll publish on Monday. In the monitor, we analyze monetary policy in 26 countries around the world. Uh, and we also zoom in on some special topics which we find particularly interesting uh, at this time of the, uh, the year. You can become a subscriber to, uh, to the Monitor. You can uh, do that on the Markets and Money Advisors website. But you can also uh, get a free subscription for the Global Monetary Conditions Monitor. If you sign up as, uh, as a patron on patreon.com and pledge at least $10 every month, uh, then you will, as part of that package, be rewarded with uh, a free subscription for Global Monetary Conditions Monitor for the next year. So please do that because then you will get the insight into what we think about global monetary policy right now. And if you do it already now, you will make it in time to get the uh, Global Monetary Conditions Monitor, which will publish, as I said, on Monday. So what will we look at in the monitor? What What's really the big deal? Well. Overall, as I said, we look at 26 uh, countries in, uh, in, in the world where we use our monetary indicators to assess whether monetary policy overall is too tight or too easy to hit the uh, inflation target of these uh, 26 countries. Most of them are inflation targets in countries. And overall, I, I can already reveal now the monetary policy generally is, uh, is, is, is pretty much spot on uh, globally as it has been actually over the past year or so. But I want to give you a little bit more. And uh, since we uh, since we had the rate decision from the FOMC next week, let me just give you a little bit of what you will be able to read in the monitor. Uh, well, I can see a little bit more uh, analysis, simulations, and so forth for what the arguments I will lay forward now. So let's start with the uh, the FOMC. We already had one rate hike uh, back in March uh, from the Fed, not surprising then, and it will not be surprising when the Fed hike is reached. <clears throat> not, nothing there, the market is fully priced for this, or nearly fully priced for it, but the question is what happens going forward. To analyze Fed policy, we have developed what we essentially call a dashboard of different indicators, which we do get both to assess uh, long-term inflation outlook, or medium-term inflation outlook, as well as the outlook for uh, Fed communication and interest rate settings and the rate part for, uh, for the Fed going forward. First of all, we, we got to ask ourselves the question, has Fed finally gotten it right in terms of inflation? Uh, in our view, there's no doubt that the, for a period uh, during the Janet Yellen years, monetary policy became too tight and uh, inflation expectations became de-angered. Inflation expectations dropped below 2% uh, while uh, Janet Yellen was uh, Fed chair. However, um, if we look at our monetary indicator for the US, which is a composite index of uh, four indicators based on, first of all, Money supply growth, nominal demand growth, exchange rate developments, and finally uh, interest rate developments. We look at these four sub indicators. We create one indicator. We look at that. Actually, uh, that indicator has been rising uh, over the past uh, one and a half years, uh, reflecting easier monetary conditions. But it's just a, uh, increased above zero. It's rather close to zero. Zero indicate that the Fed would be hitting. 2% inflation target in the medium term. So what our indicator is actually saying right now is that Fed right now has calibrated monetary conditions in such a way that it's likely to more or less hit its inflation target in the medium term. So based on that, we can also create an inflation forecast and uh, the inflation forecast that comes out of that uh, combined with our assumptions about Fed credibility and momentum in, in inflation presently, indicate that inflation is going to rise from present levels, but they're not going to rise much. It's going to rise just above uh, 2% and convert towards 
close to 2.1% uh, in, the, in the medium term. So all the Fed is gotten right. The Fed uh, shouldn't have any reason to shock the market in either negative or positive direction. And since we also have now moved interest rates uh, decisively away from the zero lower bound, the Fed funds target rate is present at 1.75. Um, the Fed again can begin to think about uh, moving monetary policy very much in a fashion it did during the Great Moderation Crisis in 2008, where interest rates is the primary uh, instrument for communicating monetary policy stance. And so uh, that's the next thing we, we look at. We look at a policy rule which is uh, similar to a, a kind of Taylor rule, and our policy rule we call a law rule, lean against the wind rule, uh, inspired by the works of Robert Hetzel. So our law rule is essentially a rule where we look at uh, the three elements. We look first of all at developments in, uh, in natural interest rate, uh, which has moved over time and come down considerably over time. We look at that and how that plays out. We see our law rule in the monetary conditions monitor. Um, that presently in nominal terms is around 2.8%. Um, and that's a long term, which will think about that as, as where 10 year yields will convert in the long run. Of course, it's a term premium, so you have to correct for that relative to, to your policy rate. But nonetheless, we, we, uh, we, we use a, a, a real natural rate. Uh, the second element is, is what we call the inflation gap. So the actual level of inflation right now compared to the 2% inflation target of the Federal Reserve. And finally, what we call activity indicator, which is a composite indicator of consumer confidence, manufacturing confidence, labor market conditions. And that indicator is actually quite elevated right now, indicating a positive output gap. When we, when we use that, to, uh, to, uh, to simulate historical movements in the Fed Fund target rate, it shows that it follows the actual rate relatively well, exactly in the way that the Taylor rule would do. Um, uh, of course, we've had a period of negative rates where such a rule would not work, and that's what we do during the quantitative easing years. But now we're in a situation where the Fed is reducing its balance sheet that is pre-announced and is following that rule and essentially we're back to now to following a rate rule uh, and interestingly enough our law rule uh, our lean against the wind rule says that rates should be inching upwards from late 2015 exactly as been the case and the rule has very much followed what we've seen in terms of Fed rates so therefore we all feel confident that if we can use this rule to make simulation for for the outlook for um, for, 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 for rates in, in the US. I won't tell you too much about it yet, but if you go into the monitor which will be published next week, and again, I'll remind me, sign up on Patreon, plus $10 a month, then you will get a free subscription for the monitor. In the monitor, you can read about how we simulate a scenario for rates based on what we think is reasonable assumption about the US economy. First of all, our inflation target is, is there. We're inf expecting inflation to move toward 2% and then stabilize, core inflation stabilizing just above 2% at 2.1%. That is pretty much consensus expectations or also oh, very much to uh, in line with what the FOMC expected back in, in March. And we would expect them also to expect now, more or less. Um, uh, and then we look at the, 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 the economic activity. Economic activity uh, is, is, is at pretty elevated levels. The output gap is positive in the US, uh, and therefore there's a limit to how much further that can increase. So what we assume is a, a slight increase toward the end of this year in the activity indicator, but then a, a flat activity indicator through 2019 uh, as capacity constraints essentially kick in. And then from there on, actually we'd expect a gradual decline back to to, 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 to a, a level uh, consistent with the closing of output gap uh, over the next then following two, three years. Uh, obviously, this is not what is going to happen because output gaps are rarely closed in an orderly, moderate, uh, gradual fashion, but rather an abrupt 
drop in, in, in economic activity when a recession hits. But, but uh, you know, we can't forecast when that will happen. So, so we think that this is a, is a way to illustrate at least uh, what's the upper limit uh, to, to how much rates can move up. Um, so, so if we do that, we, we get a rate path that, that is very similar to market pricing, essentially saying that we would get three more 25 basis point rate hikes this year. The first one will be next week in June, the next will be likely to be in September, and then again in December. That's also what the Fed was looking for next week, that's more or less market pricing. Uh, and our our law rule very much say that this is this is, is, is pretty consistent with that. And so historical uh, uh, relationship between economic activity, inflation, and and the rate uh, rates uh, would would imply uh, somewhat like three rate hikes uh, going forward uh, for 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 2018. The question then depends: What happens in 2019? Uh, well, nothing much. Uh, the uh, the, the, the law rule essentially indicate that we will have flat rates all through 2019. Uh, obviously, one can discuss the timing. Only two hikes this year, and then one hike in early 2019. But overall, three more rate hikes uh, and uh, bringing us to to uh, to two and a half percent Fed funds target rate. And, and well, really nothing above that. And then actually we go further out, rates will be coming down. This is, by the way, if you look at market pricing, pretty similar to what market prices is saying, where our simulations have an indication is that they show that the downside risk is bigger than the upside risk on rates, not in the near term, not in a year, one year time, but if we go out in one and a half years time, two years time, clearly, the downside relative to market price is on the downside rather than the upside. Um, secondly, if we compare this to uh, the so-called FOMC dots, uh, which is the uh, expected or consensus among the FOMC members on, on rates, uh, in, the, in the March uh, statement, we saw that the Fed expected continuous rate hikes over the next three, four months. Uh, and, 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 and that's not consistent with our, what our law rule shows. The only way you can get that is a, is a rather massive overheating of the U.S. economy that would bring in unemployment significantly below the natural interest rate or the natural rate of unemployment. In, in terms of our, it will bring our activity indicator to levels we haven't essentially seen uh, uh, for decades, so so we, we are very unlikely in our view to, to get to, to that kind of level of economic activity. And therefore, uh, there is an inconsistency between the, uh, the level of interest rates that the Fed signaled in two to three years uh, uh, back in, in March, and which we, by the way, expect them to signal again uh, uh, on, on Tuesday, but there is an inconsistency there. There's an inconsistency there. If the Fed actually were to take rate to that level, the Fed would murder the recovery, and that would bring the U.S. economy into recession in 2020, 2021. That's, of course, a possibility, but then that would cause the Fed to cut rates fast. So the conclusion here is what we have been saying for, uh, for the last couple of months is essentially the Fed will not hike rates above 3%. Um, at least um, unless something happens uh, dramatic happens to inflation expectations, which we really don't see right now because they're moving rates consistently with rules and our monetary indicators are not signaling that. Another thing, of course, could happen is the natural rate for some reason jump. Uh, and obviously, fiscal concerns could drive the natural rate up, but, but we have a hard time seeing uh, the Fed funds target rate sustained above 3% of the time. And actually, we don't think we'll even get to that. So, so yes. Uh, what we'll see next week is probably that the Fed will say exactly the same as they said um, uh, in, in February. Uh, there are arguments of twisting it in a little bit more hawkish direction um, because of, of uh, a little bit better macroeconomic data, particularly in the labor markets, continues to be significant in the U.S. Uh, but we have also seen some emerging markets on the U.S. Italy's below or so forth that might 
make some FOMC numbers a little bit more nervous but just looking at the numbers there's really no reason to expect a major change in, in the rhetoric and if we look at our so-called forward guidance indicator that is also saying that essentially the the Fed should do a copy paste of the uh, March statement uh, and, and, and there should be little change to the forecast but if, if I were to say anything I would say there's probably a slight risk in the hawkish direction in the very short term but that's more feeling that than what our models are saying but i wouldn't play into that as a market participant i would be much more focused on what happens one and a half two years down the road uh where where the risk clearly is to a downside relative to market expectations but i think you should you should try to have a look at the monitor because then we show the simulations of this uh in the monitor we also look a little bit more in depth about other number of other countries of course go country by country but we focus on two other countries in uh, uh, in the monitor this this month which you highlight even more than normally and that is Switzerland and Hungary so why is that well in the terms of Switzerland you look at, uh, at the, the impact of the Swiss franc on monetary policy and, and, and what that impact is for for, for, for the FMC. we saw a euro Swiss franc move above 120 back in April and a lot of market participants were beginning to talk could we move even higher than this magical level of which where where the uh, uh, S&P earlier capped uh, the, uh, the, the, the euro Swiss franc um, our analysis shows that uh, monetary conditions in Switzerland is nearly spot on right now and our policy rule for, for, for the S&P in terms of rate shows that well that's the same thing so, so don't expect the, the, the S&P really to want uh, more uh, 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 weakness in the Swiss franc uh, and fundamentally the Swiss franc is not uh, 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 massively overvalued or anything so, so it's not uh, as it was in 2011, 2012 uh, so, so we show that, we illustrate that looking both at our medium term inflation indicators and our new policy rule for, for the S&P uh, in terms of Hungary, we focus in on the fact that the uh, Hungarian Central Bank back in December introduced a quantitative easing uh, and as a result, money supply growth has picked up quite dramatically. <laughs> we think that that was badly timed monetary easing. It wasn't necessary for, for, for Hungary to have, have a dose of, of, of monetary easing uh, uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, over the past half year. Um, but if I had, and we think that that eventually will become quite inflationary, so we see uh, quite significant upside inflation risk in Hungary. And in the monitor, we look at that as well. So if you're interested in Hungary, if you're interested in Switzerland, um, have a look at the monitor. And you, as I said, you you, you can uh, get a free subscription if you pledge ten dollars or more per month at Patreon. So that's all. And of course, for uh, those of you who are already clients. I look forward to our conference calls and our talks uh, and uh, any questions are of course welcome. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.